Hey, what is going on everyone? This is Brandon with biggerpockets.com and today I wanted to show you this new Burr calculator and how it relates to the fourplex that I just picked up. And I wanna show you kind of how I analyzed this deal so that you get a good idea of how to analyze a potential Burr property. So I'm gonna walk through the four pages of the calculator. There's only four pages, and actually the fourth one is just the results page. So really there's only three pages you gotta enter any information on. So uh, first of all, if you wanna know how to get to the calculator, all you have to do is go up to the top navigation bar up here and go down to Burr calculator. You can also click the word tools. That'll take you to a page with all the calculators like the house flipping, the rental, the Burr, and the wholesaling calculator plus others. So uh, with that, let's go through this thing together. Uh, just in case you're unfamiliar with the with the story basically there was a four unit property that they called the seller Bob called us and uh, wanted to sell his property he came from a direct mail marketing lead that we had sent out and he wanted to sell his fourplex to me and so he originally offered or he suggested he wanted eighty thousand dollars for the fourplex now I know eighty thousand is crazy cheap and uh, but don't worry about that uh, prices are relative it rents low the pr purchase price is low so even if that's not your area don't worry about it don't let it distract you so uh, again eighty thousand dollars what he asked for this property but it needed a lot of work he said and so what we did is we ran the numbers at that and we kind of guessed on about a hundred thousand dollars worth of work we knew it needed a lot of work so we kind of uh, roughly guessed originally about a hundred thousand dollars so let me using those numbers let me show you a little bit here of how I ran that so first of all on page one we're just doing property information we've got our title what are we gonna call it the Aberdeen fourplex that's the town it's in uh, the address here uh, the city the state the zip code and then we have our annual property taxes. Now, a lot of people get confused and they say, well, how do I know the property taxes? I don't know what that is. And they shut their brain off and they go back to watching, I don't know, Dancing with the Stars or something on Netflix, right? Like they stop working because it gets hard. So I want to encourage you guys fight through. If there's anything you don't understand in here, there are answers to everything. Uh, you can ask in the forums, you can email support, or uh, the easiest way is just hover over these little question marks. Every, next to every single one of the uh, inputs here on the calculator, there's a little question mark that explains what it is and how you can learn. And some of them even have links to articles that explain in more detail. So annual property taxes, how do you find that out? Well, here it says, if unsure, this information is typically publicly available on your county assessor's website. So what I did is I went to my local county assessor's website, pulled it up, discovered that this property annual taxes were $984 per month. Cool. All right. Below that, we added a photo. I did that. And then I entered a little sales description. In other words, what do I want to know about this property later? What do I want on the top of the final page? This is just a description. You can write whatever you want there, or you can just copy and paste from whatever the real estate agent, if it's a market deal, uh, what they had written. But anyway, it's kind of nice there. You can also click other property features down here. We can do like number of bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage, all that stuff. Right now, to keep this simple, I'm not going to worry about that, but th that is there for your convenience. All right. So we're done with page one. Let's move on to page two, clicking next step. All I did here, I walked through and I put in my purchase price, $80,000. And uh, what do I think it's worth when it's all fixed up? In other words, what's the after repair value? I did 180, and that's a little bit hard to know. And if you're not sure how to figure out the ARV, the after repair value, hover over the question mark, and there's even a link there to an article that explains more in detail. How do you find that? Then our purchase closing costs, I set up right about $3,000 for closing costs. And then repairs. I guessed the repairs again at about $100,000. Uh, now, if you wanted to repairs, if you're, if you're not very good at that, you can always click this expand cost button here. And it actually expands it down so that you can enter in each section of the house, each category, roof, concrete, gutters, garage, siding. Down below, we got demo, sheetrock, plumbing, carpentry, et cetera, et cetera, all the way through. And that can help you quite a bit as well. But I just go ahead and put a number in there of 100000 because I just kind of estimated that when I did this deal, when it came in. All right, so now we've got our loan details. Now, if you're familiar with the Burr strategy, it is where you buy a property, you rehab that property, you rent it out, and then you refinance it. So we're dealing with two different loans here, two different loans. We have an initial loan, the initial way that we buy the property, and then later we're going to refinance the property after maybe 12, 24, whatever months, a, a certain st a set of time, we're going to refinance it. And so the reason that we have the Burr calculator is because it's different than the rental property calculator because we're talking about two different loans, an initial one and then a refinance. So the Burr calculator, what it did is it actually broke that up into sections. So we're actually having an initial loan, the purchase loan, and then we have the refinance loan. So let's first tackle the purchase loan. How are we going to buy this? Now, if I had the cash and if I wanted to pay all cash for the initial purchase, I could have done that and I could click here, cash purchase. But 
I didn't pay cash for this. Instead, I knew I wanted to use a loan. I wanted to use a private lender. That's typically how I like to do deals. I like to use private lenders to buy the property. And then later on, I refinance it. And so for this deal, I just said that I wanted a loan amount of 180,000. Why? Because I didn't want to have to bring any money out of pocket. Uh, so, so I, we already know that the purchase was 80,000 and we know that the estimated repairs were around a hundred thousand. So that's 180. So I just decided to put in a loan amount of 180. My interest rate, typically for private money or hard money, I'm right around 12%, sometimes a little less, sometimes eight or nine or 10. Uh, but in this case, the lender I was working with, he wanted 12% and one point. So there's one point, which means 1% fee of the purchase price. So I put all that information in here, loan point, p fees and points. Well, that I paid that fee out of pocket or basically out of closing uh, that that one point came out. And then is it an interest only loan? Yes, it is. This is not usually with private money or hard money. It's interest only. You pay it uh, just interest every month and then you pay the whole thing off later on. So interest only, yes. If it was no, then it would be a certain term, like a 30 year fixed mortgage or something like that. But this is just interest only. And then finally, when do I want to refinance it? Because again, with the Burr strategy, we're refinancing it later. So I chose 12 months. I said 12 months is about what it's going to take me to re stabilize the property and go get a new loan. Typically banks want you to wait at least six months. Sometimes they want you to wait 12. Uh, so I will plan on 12 months from now refinancing the property. All right, down below we've got refinance loan details. And so this is the second uh, loan. This is the refinance loan. So when after later on, we're going to go get a brand new loan. So I did enter my loan amount here. I did a loan amount of 126,000. Now you might be wondering where I came up with that number. And here's my logic. When I go to refinance a property, typically banks will refinance a property, an investment property, to 70% of the value. Now, earlier I said that I thought the value was about 180,000 when it's all fixed up, but 180,000. And so 70% of 180,000 happens to be 126. I just did that on a little calculator. Uh, and so I did a loan amount of 126. Uh, and then interest rate, five and a half percent, I think is pretty uh, conservative. It might be lower than that, but I'll guess a little bit higher just in case. Uh, let's see if you're not sure you can hover over the question marks again We can tell you can even get a link to where you can find out what local rates are in your area uh, Then we got other closing costs when you go to refinance. It's kind of expensive I don't know why banks charge so much, but this is how they make their money So they charge a lot of closing costs So I did four thousand dollars for closing costs on the refinance now the loan fees and points this time that four thousand dollars We're gonna wrap that into the loan rather than paying it out of pocket We're gonna wrap it into the loan just that's just sometimes banks will do that sometimes they won't but we'll say that we are and then is it an interest only loan? No, this time it's a normal loan. How many years? 30. And then the last question here, it, it involves cap rates. Now on this property, I don't really care about the cap rate. Cap rates are typically only used in multifamily, large multifamily properties or commercial properties. Uh, a fourplex typically we don't care too much about it, but just for kicks, I put in a 10 cap, which is probably pretty normal for this area for commercial properties. Uh, and again, if you don't know what that is, hover over the question mark and you can even read an article about what is a cap rate. All right, now we're on page three. Uh, page three here, I'm gonna start with talking about the rent. Now, originally, uh, you could just put in one total amount on the property. If it's a multifamily, you can put in how much total, or you can divide it up into units. So I divided up into units here, unit A, B, C, and D, and rent on all of them is 650, 650, 650, and 650. And it automatically calculates up here at the top to be 2,600 total. I also know that there's a shed on the property. There's a little shed in the back. I don't think I mentioned that in the blog post that this uh, video goes with, but there is a shed in the back and I could probably rent that for around 45 bucks a month. It's a pretty big garage actually. Uh, so I'm sure one of these tenants would like to have a garage that they'll pay 45 bucks a month for. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, now we've got the expenses. Like what do we gotta pay out every month? And this is where a lot of people end up missing out when they're doing these numbers on their on paper or on a spreadsheet they miss some a couple expenses and it can cause a lot of drama so here we've got electricity water sewer garbage hoas all those things and i don't have to worry about any of those there is no hoa here which is a homeowners association uh and the tenant's going to pay their own electricity their own water their own sewer their own garbage that's why i love this fourplex is because the tenant pays their own utilities it saves me a lot of money however i do have to pay insurance every month monthly insurance so i did 120 dollars a month for insurance and i have to pay property taxes which calculates from that automatically inputs from what you put on page one we put in taxes on page one of the calculator and then other monthly expenses uh what i did is i hit the add button and i added two expenses flood insurance and lawn care 
because this is located in a legal FEMA defined flood zone. Uh, and so I know that I have to pay some flood insurance. And so I put in $120 there. If you're not sure about these, just call up your local insurance agent, call up your local water department, electricity department, whatever. You can find these numbers out. And then lawn care. I know that I'm going to maintain the lawn. On average, we only have to maintain the lawn about half the year. Uh, but uh, about half the year, but we know that uh, during the other half, it's probably going to cost me around 80 bucks a month. So I kind of average that as on average over the year, about 40 bucks a month. All right. So down below here, we've got a few more expenses that we need to take care of. We've got our vacancy repairs and maintenance. We've got our capital expenditures. We've got our property management fees. And so for vacancy, I put 5% in my area. It's pretty typical repairs and maintenance. I put 5% because we're going to have this property fixed up pretty nice. And in fact, I'm completely rehabbing them. Uh, capital expenditures, those are things you got to save up for over time, like new refrigerators, new roofs, new plumbing, new windows. And I actually think that might be a little bit high because we're rehabbing every square inch of these properties. But I'm going to go ahead and say 10%, which is 260 bucks a month for these properties. And then finally, property management fees, I did 10%. I could manage this myself, but I don't really want to. And even if I was going to manage myself, uh, I'm still going to pay myself 10% for management because I want to make sure that I'm not buying a property. I'm not buying a job. I'm buying an investment. All right. The last section goes into future assumptions. Uh, annual growth. I'm going to guess the income is going to go up 1% per year. I'm going to guess the property value is going to go up 1% per year. I'm going to guess the growth expenses are going to go up. The expenses are going to grow 1% per year. And finally, what does it cost to sell a property typically? Usually eight, nine, 10% total of a property value. Uh, you're typically paying 6% for an agent and whatever else. Now, the reason this is in there, these are all optional. These bottom little future assumptions are all optional. But what I wanna know is, let's just say five years down the road, I decided to sell the property. Let's just say I decided to sell it then. Sales expenses helps me to calculate what is my overall return? Like, wh am I gonna make money on this property overall because of that? And that's what this does. So from this point, that's the entire calculator right there. That's end of page three. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the calculate results button. And now it takes just a couple seconds to compute. And then it's gonna pop us up with uh, an estimate of what we're gonna make. And now remember, this is what the guy was asking for the property. This is what he was asking for it. Uh, that doesn't mean that's what I'm gonna pay, but this is the, what he was asking. So if I notice here, I notice first of all, that immediately I've got, well, for, let me explain how this looks first. I've got acquisition and then I've got a refinance section because we've got two loans. So we've got two different sets of numbers to work with. First of all, I can see that during the acquisition phase, I'm gonna be losing $306 a month in cash flow. Ouch. Why am I losing so much? Well, down below, I can see all these expenses added up. 132 for vacancy, CapEx, management, property taxes, lawn care, uh, flood insurance, principal and interest, insurance repairs, and then mortgage. 1800 bucks a month for that mortgage. That's the, that's the killer there. So my total monthly income is 2645. Uh, my total monthly expense is 2951, meaning my monthly cash flow is negative 306. That's a negative 76 return on investment. That's pretty terrible, right? I, this deal doesn't look real, real hot. In fact, if I look down below, I can kind of see that over time, I don't actually have much equity in this property for a long time. I mean, I, I'm not going to make profit on the deal until between year three and four, if I were to sell it later. I mean, it's just all around, not a, not a great deal. I mean, uh, with the original acquisition, now let's look at the refinance section though. If I click refinance, now we see after month 12, here's what we're looking at. Now this is a whole lot better, a whole lot better. Check this out. My monthly income in year, or it would be again, 2645, but my monthly expenses are down to 1889, meaning my monthly cash flow at this point would have been $755 a month. That's a whole lot better, right? 755 a month, I, I can do that. And why did it drop so much? Well, one simple answer. We lowered our interest rate from that interest only 12% loan down to a much, much lower loan, a payment of only 738. Now, why did that drop so much? Well, one, because the interest rate was lower, but also the loan amount was lower. If you recall, our refinance amount, the amount we refinanced it, was only $126,000 plus closing costs, so 130. And you can kind of see that information over here on the left. We can see the acquisition information and the refinance information. Uh, so now we're at this point, we're gonna have $58,000 of our own money in the deal. That's not a no money. That's not a no or low money down deal, really. Uh, now, is that good to make 755 bucks a month in cash flow when I have to invest? I have to keep in. I have to spend 58 grand, 59 grand. Well, to look at that, we need to know the cash on cash return down here. 
uh, are up here 15.43 percent cash on cash return is what I'm kind of looking at now that's pretty darn good I mean that's that's pretty good in return but that's a lot of work to achieve 15.43 percent now honestly it might be okay, but for such a big risky proposition like this property, I actually would like to get a little bit more than that. And so what I did is I did not uh, accept the offer that he had submitted to us or the, the verbal when he said he wanted 80,000, I said no. Uh, I said that just too much. The main reason why I said no is not so much the cash on cash return, but think of it this way. If I paid 80,000 for the property, 80,000 for the property. And then I put 100,000 into it. That's $180,000. The property was only worth $180,000. So why would I go through the trouble to have a property that I could just buy anyway? I could probably find a fourplex for $180,000, right? Why go through all that work? So I want to have equity up front. I always like to have equity when I go into a deal. I like to have a good amount. So that way if the market dropped, I'm still okay. So what we did is we went and countered and we said, no, how about 40,000? And he countered back and we went and looked at the property and we talked. We settled on $45,000 purchase price. So additionally, in that process, we determined that it actually, as we got more detailed in our numbers and we looked at the property, we realized that the rehab wouldn't be 100,000. It was more like 80,000. And even that I think is, is a little bit over than what I'm going to need, but we'll say 80,000 to be conservative. So now that changes our numbers a lot. So let's now to go back, we're going to re-edit this, this uh, report. We're going to go down to the bottom. I'm just going to click the edit report button and it's going to take us like 10 seconds to edit a couple things here. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to change. I'm going to skip through page one. I'm going to go to page two and purchase price is no longer 80,000. Now it's $45,000. And uh, I'm going to keep the after repair value, same thing. I'm going to keep closing costs the same, but my estimated repair cost is no longer $100,000. i am going to change that to $80,000. Nothing else is really changing at this point except for the loan amount. I'm going to change that because I, I don't need that much money anymore. Now all I need is uh, 80 plus 45. So now I'm needing roughly $125,000 plus a few thousand for closing costs. I'm needing about, about 130,000 would be nice, right? So let's just say 130,000. Now, if you read the blog post that this video goes with, you'll know that what I actually ended up doing was dividing that amount. My private lender offered me 100 and I used a bank line of credit to do the other 30. That said, I'm just going to combine it all together right here for 130 under the loan amount because they're pretty similar in interest rate. It's not going to be 100% perfect, but it's pretty darn close for what our purposes are today, especially for one year that we're going to have this thing. All right. So uh, other than that, 130,000, our interest rate stays at 12. My points are all the same. Refinancing after 12 months, nothing else really changing here. And I'm even going to keep the same refinance loan amount later on. I'm going to refinance this into $126,000 mortgage later. All right. So I'm going to go next step. Nothing's changing on this page at all. We're not changing income or expenses. So let's go ahead and calculate the results now. This is actually what I did when I was doing these reports. I was running the numbers and I wanted to find out where it would work. Now here, I want to show you these numbers. And so what I'm, what I'm looking at here is this first street property, I can see my monthly income of $2,645 per month in income. Also, I see that my monthly expenses are $2,451 for expenses. That means my monthly cash flow is now during the acquisition phase, during the beginning phase when we're using the high loan, I'm still making 200 bucks a month in cash flow, still using $200 a month in cash flow, which is pretty awesome. Uh, I can see that my cash on cash return is infinite. Why is it infinite? Because I have actually no money in this deal at all. If you look down here on the left side, you can see that my total cash needed at purchase was just $700. 700 bucks is all that I needed to be able to buy this, or sorry, negative $700 is all that I needed to buy this property. So in other words, I actually made money when I bought this property. I actually got a surplus. So it used no money. So you can't really have a return on investment when I have no money invested. However, let's click over to the refinance tab here. Okay, so now here in the refinance tab, you can see that uh, the numbers have changed a little bit. My monthly income, 2645, monthly expenses, 1889, meaning my monthly cash flow, 755. Exact same number we saw earlier, right? Because we didn't change the loan amount. It's the same as we saw earlier. However, look at my cash on cash return where before it was 15%, now it's 274.86%. That's significantly different, isn't it? So why is it so much better now? It's because we have way less money invested. 
So to take a look at that, what I mean by that, look over here on the left side. We've got our acquisition information. So we had a, a surplus because we had extra money when we bought the property for fixing the property up. We have our fees, points, all that good stuff. We didn't need any money to buy it. In fact, we got paid 700 bucks to do this deal. The refinance, we refinanced for 126 plus 4,000 in closing costs is 130. It was amortized over 30 years and total cash invested. The total cash that I have left in the deal after everything's said and done, my own personal money, I would have to end up keeping $3,300 in the deal. I'd have to keep 3000 So this is not, at this point, is not a no money down deal. This is a $3,000 down at the end of the day. Uh, now, I'd have to, you know, if I wanted to get more, if I wanted to maybe get a loan amount of 135, so I'd have no money down, we just got to make sure that this property appraises for like 185, 190. Because remember, the bank's only going to give me 70% of the value. So maybe the value would come in at 190 or 200. I honestly, it could like, right? The market's climbing a year from now. It may be way hotter than that, or it may be less than that. Maybe I'll have to put more in, but the bottom line is this is right now. I'm only having 3,300 bucks in, which is why it shows me as a cash on cash return of 274% because I'm making 800 bucks a month almost, and I've only invested $3,300. So I'm making my entire investment back every few months, which is pretty awesome. Down below, I can see a few more things, income expenses, 50% rule, all that good stuff. And below that, I can see things like the uh, income expense ratio, total initial equity, my uh, which this is the equity to start with. I got 50 grand in equity to start this thing. Debt coverage ratio, I got my ARV based on the cap rate, which is interesting that the ARV and the cap rate is 179, almost exactly 180, which is what I said earlier, but that's a little deeper than we need to go. Uh, down here at the very bottom, I can see that uh, um, I can see that my income expense and cash flow. I can see that like over time where it's all going. I can see that my income is going up over time. My expenses are going up. My cash flow is going up. So by year 15, I'm looking at 11,000 a year in cash flow. By year 20, I'm over 12,000. I can also see my equity. This is this green line right here. So I start the deal with $51,000 in equity, but over time. By year 10, I'm more like $89,000 of equity. By year 20, I'm looking at $146,000 in equity. Now this, of course, is on a 30-year mortgage. So let's do one more edit. If you remember from the blog post that this post is from, uh, I actually am putting this on an 18-year mortgage when I refinance it. So let's go do that. Let's go down here to page two, the refinance deal. We're gonna amortize this over 18 years. Let's see what this does to our numbers. The reason I do that is because I want the property to be paid off when my daughter goes to college so that we can use this property to fund her college education. So I click over here on the refinance tab again and check this out. I can see now that my monthly cash flow dropped a little bit because I'm, I'm paying the loan off faster. However, I now have $544 a month in cash flow. Still, that's still great cash flow. Still 200% cash on cash return. And if I scroll to the bottom, I can see this thing getting paid off over 18 years instead. So 18 years from now, I can estimate that I'll have about $217,000 in equity. At that point, I have a couple choices. I can uh, I can sell the property and pay the taxes and pay everything on it and then use the cash to pay for my daughter's college education or whatever she wants to use it for. or I can refinance the property. And remember the, how the refinance works is I can, I can refi it, I can get a new loan for 70% of the value, let's say. Now maybe the laws will be different then or the rules will be different, but let's just say that I could refinance it for 70% of that 217. I can still take out a whole lot of money I get it, and I keep the property. In fact, I keep getting cash flow, and that's probably what I'll end up doing. We'll keep the property, we'll take the money out, and be able to use that for her college education. Now, the last thing I'll show you here, just so you guys know how this calculator, one more feature. Down at the bottom says more actions. If you click that, you can see that you can download a PDF report of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. I'm gonna download, and while this is doing it, it takes about 10 seconds or so. Let me explain the other ones. I can share the PDF report with another Bigger Pockets member. So let's say I wanted my wife to look at this deal. I can actually share this report uh, to her, to anybody, to, to my assistant, to my, you can actually say her to anybody. They don't even have to be a Bigger Pockets member. You can, all you do if you click this, it'll give you a link. So check this out. If I just uh, click, it takes about, again, about 10 seconds and it's gonna be a link I can send to anybody. This link is live. I think it's for 24 hours. I could be wrong on that. It's for a, a short time, maybe seven days. Uh, oh yeah, seven days. So this link right here, I can just click this and it copies it to my clipboard. I can paste it to anybody I want and here's what they're gonna see. They're gonna see this right here. They're gonna see the, uh, the little PDF report here, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so I can send this and then they'll know a little bit more about what's going on, what's with the property, why I like it, what the good and bad is. And really it just shows that I done my numbers and that I'm confident in what I've done. 
so anyway, this is basically just a summary. And then if I go back here again, I can show you, we can also copy a report to another user. What this means is let's say I wanted another bigger pockets pro member or, or uh, you know, like somebody who has access to these calculators. I wanted them to be able to actually edit this report. I can copy the report to them and then they have it in their uh, little like uh, file of reports and now they can go in and edit it themselves. Basically like you're duplicating it and you're giving them their own version, which is kind of cool. My assistant and I use this all the time. She'll analyze a deal, then she'll shoot it over to me to analyze and make sure I, she did her numbers correctly. And then I can edit it and make changes if I need to and I can shoot it back to her. It's pretty awesome. I can also upload a company logo if I wanted to upload my logo to the to the PDF report. I can reanalyze the report as something else. Let's say I don't want to burr this property. Let's say I just want to flip it or I just want to do a rental property. I can just click one of those or wholesale it. I can do one of those and it just transfers all the information to the other calculators. And then finally I can start a brand new analysis. And that is how you analyze a rental property using the Burr calculator. Hope you guys enjoyed this.